Good morning, everyone. Um, here are some things that they're not telling you about the Minneapolis George Floyd protests. So the first and foremost thing that is, I would say, arguably the most important is that they're not illustrating that every time the police escalate, the protesters escalate. The protest did start off peacefully on Tuesday. I believe the protest started at the precinct and then moved to 38th in Chicago where the scene happened and then moved back to the precinct. Technically, some people never left the precinct. Um, so I, I guess I should say like the protest split up and the rally was at the um, was at uh, 30th in Chicago with some people planning to stay, but a lot of people, including myself, moving to the precinct on Minnehaha and Lake. Um, the peaceful protesters that were there earlier before the protest moved there at like, I would say 5.30, um, of course with a lot of lag time because there were a lot of people to move to the precinct, those protesters were peaceful and those protesters were the first ones to get tear gassed and rubber bulleted. And then things were violent when we got there, when they were tearing up the police station. And then they tear gassed again. And then things got set on fire later on that evening. And then things actually calmed down. I went back. Um, I didn't go back the next day, but I went back yesterday. And things were peaceful again. As far as I understood, there was no more tear gas. I, I know a lot happened that night. Um, they even brought out the bike squad to try to push people back. And there were more rubber bullets, more tear gas. But hours had passed since then. And I went back yesterday. And the protest had, uh, I don't want to say, um, I was about to say something not appropriate. Um, the protest was peaceful. I will say that. And then it stayed peaceful and Mad Dad showed up and there were some organizations giving out food, a lot of supplies to go around, which I will get more into in a few. And um, the police showed up, started tear gassing again. The precinct burned down. And back to the resources, people weren't looting just for fun. People took resources from Cub and Target, mostly from what I saw. I don't think they could get in Aldi for whatever reason, or, you know, also it's Aldi. Um, and redistributed them to the community. Some people just went on ahead and took what they needed and wanted. And I don't have anything against those people either. But a lot of people just carried out stuff to give away to other people. The goods were redistributed to the community as they should be. And the demonization of rioting and looting is the problem. That's some centerist bullshit that this one black person right here is not in line with. Any condoning of how anyone grieves towards violence towards their community only comes from oppressors and centerists. And those are not the people that we are accommodating. Because a, a lot of us understand that it could have been any of us. It could have been me. It could have been you. But there has to be some degree of separation or some sort of disassociation to think that it's appropriate to try to police people's reactions. I saw a lot from white supremacists on the internet, of course. Um, of course, they're, they're always the furthest away from this kind of stuff, so they get to talk all the kinds of stuff and be all the keyboard warriors all day. But don't show up, we'll kick your ass. And um, 
Another thing is that um, in the rare occasion that white supremacists will back up disabled people, the woman that you may have heard about in the wheelchair that got beat up, there are videos of that. What people are leaving out is that not only was she blocking the way and trying to take things from people, but she was also actively stabbing people, which is why she got beat up. She wasn't trying to stab people. She stabbed people. And I saw another news broadcast that demonized the protest on Lake Minnehaha, where I will, um, for, for very illustrative, illustrative purposes, say the angry protest and the people on 38th in Chicago are more like the sad protest. Um, people demonizing anger, like anger isn't important. There are different ways to process grief and all emotions and all reactions are valid, especially in these times where we already have all this other stuff going on. People who may have otherwise been at work were also at the protest. Keep that in mind. We had a, a we have a lot of active people because of the coronavirus. It might not have been as big if it weren't for this. Um and the people of course I'm sure a lot of people spoke to the press at 38th in Chicago, but the uh, broadcast that I saw cherry-picked the centrists and the people who were demonizing and criticizing the protests turned to riots, turned back to protests, turned back to riots on Lake Street with no mention of how the police were escalating the protesters with violence. So... My plan, I do have plans today. I'm going to go back out. I don't know if I'm going to go back out to uh, Lake and Minnehaha, but the plan is to go to Chicago and uh, 38th and do that part of the grieving process. And uh, I'm sure there'll be more to come, but right now, what we need to focus on is that all grieving is important and valid. And anyone disrespecting any protest or any riot you're you're not important to us you're not helping us you don't care about our lives because if you did you would understand where this anger is coming from and thank you to everyone out there who's showing us solidarity and is also protesting and rioting we love and appreciate you um thank you for the videos of um how to defuse tear gas because they're using tear gas out here like it's free and word definitely needs to spread to stop using milk to deactivate um, tear gas when it gets on you because um, tear gas has bacteria and there's another solution that might be considered less accessible to people, but definitely better than milk and getting bacteria in your eyes, nose and mouth. Y'all have a... Uh... I want to say have a have a great weekend, but you know what? Have an angry weekend. Have a sad weekend. Have whatever weekend you need to have to get on with the rest of your life. Because this is where we are now and we don't know where we'll be tomorrow. Thank you.